Welcome to our webinar, Charting Costs as Jack's Market Outlook for the second half of 2024. Thank you for joining us today. I know that today is exciting times for Singapore because of the new Prime Minister that will be coming in. So, um, but before I do that and pass the time to, we're going to talk about some exciting stuff that's happening in Singapore as well as the market. Uh, let's just do a brief uh, some announcement. I think that for Malaysian clients, uh, there will not be a touch and go quiz today. Uh, due to some technical reasons. So those will be moved to our next session, which we will be talking about probably the US, Hong Kong or Singapore market as well. But uh, just a quick update on the campaign for the Malaysian clients, uh, which Beyond Borders, which is running from 18 March to 31st August this year. So under this campaign, there will be lower cross-border trade. And of course, there are prices up to 59,000 ringgit to be won. So if you want to know some of the prices, uh, travel warrants worth 13000 8000 and I think they are 5000 as well. There are also consolation prices and travel warrants to be grabbed. Now, there is also our mascot, Galaxian. You can see that. It's pretty cute. So that's also up for grabs. And uh, that's basically for it. If you want to have more information, you can scan on this QR code to find out more information about it. Now, uh, I'll just give you some time to scan the QR while I introduce you to our favorite technical analyst, uh, Chua Weiren. For those of you who've been following our Singapore market uh, morning brief, you know that uh, Weiren talk about the Singapore market on a consistent basis. So uh, we're very glad to have him. He'll give you some overview on the macro outlook and share some of the technicals about some exciting companies before we dive into the Q&A session. All right, um, without further much ado, I'm just going to pass the time to Weiren. Weiren, over to you. All right, thank you very much, Billy, uh, for the kind introduction. Like I said, um, thanks for joining in. Uh, it shows that uh, we are important as well as I'm not saying the PM, uh, the newly, uh, in, uh, newly uh, incoming PM is not important, but um, uh, thanks for attending uh, to all 80 of you all. All right, so um, today I will talk about the Q2 equities market outlook. So um, we have just finished Q1 since on April and you know, uh, based on the economic outlook, um, we um we do have a very strong Nodex in February. Then uh, March, we did see the dip, but uh, overall, if you dip into the numbers, uh, our trade remained healthy, especially on the section on the uh um on the electronics part uh, components. So we did have a very good uh, exponential trade on that day. All right, uh, on on that part as well. So uh, CPI is likely has uh. Uh, so we can significantly so we are on course, um. Uh, but I think that the uh, MES is likely to, uh, retain its uh policy band until July, uh, and then July we see the tone how it is. All right. So um, also other than tonight, um, um, the, the what's happening at Istana, uh, we also have CPI, uh, num US CPI numbers as reporting. So uh, it's going to be a very important one, uh, which determine market. I got a feeling that uh, regardless of the result, I think the U.S. market might charge higher and break into a new high. Uh, specifically because S&P 500 is testing a new high, NASDAQ as well. Uh, the Dow is slightly lagging a bit, but I'm confident that the Dow will actually eventually catch up and uh, lead the market higher. All right, so uh, without further ado, I think uh, enough for the, the, the brief introduction on the market, a brief update. Um, okay, so some disclaimer. Now, right, do they just... Uh, this webinar by me, Billy, and uh, CGS uh, is just for educational purpose. Um, do not use this as a trade advice and uh, and so into a trade. Uh, if you have incurred any losses, uh, CGS, I, me, BD, uh, we are not liable for any losses that is incurred on this. So if you want and to to enter a trade or something, please look for your financial advisor, a licensed one by MES. Okay, so um, today is very simple. Uh, in order to go straight into the to the uh Singapore market, uh, we can't pers we can't possibly just uh you know look at the Singapore market as per se. You know, we need to look from a top down approach, mainly from the larger scale like uh from the US, uh Europe and the North Asia. North Asia being uh China, and Japan, and uh to a lesser extent, um a bit of South Korea because they are quite maintaining a, a partner, but um, due to time, I won't touch on South Korea today. All right, so um, I think the main news is uh, this year for the US one, it, the US news is uh, election held in November, whether there's a rate cut, and lastly, uh, how's the CPI, the inflation is going to be uh, going forward on this. All right, so 
uh, we can take some cue. I think CPI is likely to maintain or drop uh, slightly lower as part what uh, the Bloomberg consensus is saying. Uh, uh, reason why is because re U.S. retail sales and consumer confidence has suffered some dip. Um, if you look at what, uh, if I look at the data strongly, right, uh, main part of the spending and what causes inflation is actually uh, done by the Biden administration, the fiscal policy itself. So uh, that caused uh, why um, the Democrats are spending their way out in the election. Um, this morning, we saw the news on the tariff, 100% tariff on the EV sales and some uh, sharp increase in the chips and the semicon itself. So it's, some, it's signaling to the electorate in US that um, the Biden administration is equally as hard-handed hard, uh, hard on, uh, on China itself. Right, but nonetheless, I think uh, Chinese economy uh, has uh, slight recovered slightly. Uh, yesterday the purchasing uh, PMI number came in good, and then last month the GDP number uh, came in better as well. Uh, you can see that the CSR three hundred and the Hang Seng Index has seen a very strong uh, recovery as well. Uh, but this for another day, if you like, uh, I think I will do a Hong Kong market outlook on the end of May. Uh, nothing is confirmed, but I'll just give you a heads up first. All right, so uh, meanwhile, I think North Asia, I think what's worrying is uh, Japan's BOJ. Uh, why is because the Japanese yen is uh, heavily traded. Uh, the most traded currency right now because of positive carry trade of, of the US dollars. Uh, B, the Bank of Japan did some intervention right, uh, during Showa Day. It's a public holiday uh, in, in I think, two weeks ago. All right, but uh, it got uh, it raised some uh anger by Janet Yellen that uh why did the Japanese uh sell its treasuries without informing uh the U.S. the U.S. Treasury, which is uh is the head of it is the secretary is uh of course Janet Yellen. All right, so by BOJ's monetary stance and weakening yen, um, the the straightforward economy policy is to raise interest rate, but their hands are tied. Uh, and why is because uh, if they raise their rate, uh, that means that the debt, the national debt they're going to pay is equally will be marked up by hundred folks. All right. And second thing, um, but on the on the other side of coin, yield is weakening, so it's like unlikely to you know to see any changes right now. So UADA is having a very tough time for now. All right, so um, going to very straight into why, despite all this gloomy outlook, uh, Ukraine, China, uh, Ukraine war, um, the 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 Middle East tension, and all this, uh, we are not seeing any signs of uh reset, flashing recession yet. Um, why is it so? First, um, I I I've been using this uh leading economic indicator, um, for the past uh ten years. All right. Uh, you can look at that. That um, so basically, what's LEI is basically they use the top ten, uh, leading indicators, and then they they do a they do a a, a differential weightage, and then they come out with the uh, number. All right, if you look at the fact that uh, there's a um between O four, I think that's where the market recover after after the dot com bubble, and then uh, we can see that O four that is ah that's uh, thirty years ago. Uh, we could see that market actually roll to a new high again. All right, but you can see that what's the tipping point is while it's rising, uh, the LEI is uh, dropping and then flattening out uh, and then uh, did a sharp drop and then a sharp recovery uh, in 09. And then after that, uh, while the LEI uh, goes into a sideways move, uh, that's where 2018, when Donald Trump started a trade war uh, with China, uh, I could remember the time, uh, and then uh, LEI actually actually caused a divergence and spread down. All right, so in twenty twenty two, we do see a short term uh divergence where the uh, market uh in twenty twenty one actually uh the market actually uh went up uh higher in October and then but LEI start to pick and then drop uh lower while uh, uh going higher. So. Um, twenty the whole of twenty twenty two until October, it, we actually see a um a market fall, so before recovering to the upside again. So that's the reason why that we can see the higher lows for the I E L E I rising. Uh, from O nine itself, uh, higher lows. Uh, we can see that the economy is actually recovering. Um, during this um twenty two uh this period, uh, it can be considered a, a recession because we do see um uh, that. 
that quarter two and quarter three of the GDP are uh, slipping to negative growth, uh, just like what the um the Germany German uh, economy is doing like uh, last year. All right, and recent days, although Germany economy has picked up, uh, but I do not foresee that uh, Germany will emerge as a stronger economy, although it has uh, just displaced Japan. All right, so another indicator I'm looking at is the yield curve uh, has not inverted. So um, a lot of co on the contrary belief, um, the yield curve actually need to invert. Uh, the yield curve invert, and uh, when the yield curve invert, uh, people start to panic. All right, when people start to panic, oh, say, oh, recession is coming when the yield curve invert. But actually, if you study properly, um, Bloomberg is high enough to mark out the recessionary dates. Uh, you can see that uh, when the yield curve sharply rose above the zero line for three consecutive periods, then we can see that, uh, hey, uh, the recessionary pressure really started uh, going forward on this. All right, same thing. Um, 05, it started to invert. And then uh, 05, it started to invert. And 07, it started to rise up sharply. Then 08, September, um, the recession uh, actually happens. Same thing, 09, uh, COVID, I, um, 2019, sorry. Uh, for the typo, uh, it actually went up and then uh, sharp drop. So right now we are inverted very heavily, but we are still staying below a zero line. Um, the reason why is because I think um, not I think uh on the pop uh popular belief is that um the uh the the recovery uh the oh sorry not the recovery um uh, people are actually buying into more of the short term uh treasury use. All right, you can see that the, the, the 10 years are, are actually selling, uh, are actually dumping off uh, over the longer term, uh, buying the short term, so that they get the best part of the yield uh, itself. All right. Okay, so another one, uh, other than you, the the two two year, 10 year spread, um, rate card. Rate card is actually a very good sign for, uh, for indicator. So the one that I highlight in green is actually um, the rate, pause and um, the rate pause, all right? So uh, this is some of the arrow over here. Uh, so this actually um, the rate cut and then it uh, goes and then it pause. And then uh, once it cut, actually we can see that it goes into recession back then. Uh, same thing over here, uh, rate pause in 06 to 07 uh, before Bastion actually show some problem. And then um, the market actually still edge up higher during the pausing. So once it announced the rate cut three consecutive period later, uh, the market actually thanks and is coincidentally on the the September October period as well. Same thing on the um this uh when the Fed I still remember this one 2019 um 2019 onwards and then uh September 2019 onwards they start to cut rates. Uh Jerome Powell actually was there to cut rate and then um prices uh actually uh then all the way in maintain. And then after that, COVID came, and then he can't reach further to stimulate the economy. And then we can see that um, the Dow actually all went all time high. So right now, I think market still has the strength to go up even higher uh, because of rate pausing. So we have to see how the CPI number is going to be. My best guess, uh, September will likely to be a twenty five basis point cut um, to 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 prepare for the incoming uh, presidential election. Other than that, I think that why this year would not will have would not have a very strong uh, recessionary pressure is because uh, um yet uh before September uh is because I think uh because of the presidential election this is the final year uh, normally the third year of the presidential election cycle is the strongest uh equities growth fourth year uh we do grow but uh we still see um a very flat uh flat growth uh lower momentum. All right. Uh, but one thing that uh, I think the regional banks in US are still causing a problem. So and the Fed just cut away the the emergency lending program back in March. So uh, this might be have some spill over for the for the banks. Um, the uh, the regional banks. It may not cause as much pain as what the Lehman Brothers does in OE, but it's still uh worthwhile watching for. All right. So based on these points, uh, you can aggregate that uh where. And when does the market will really correct or go into a new bearish trend? All right, but given the time and age, I think bearish trend is likely to be a uh, very short while. Sorry, guys. Yep. So as you can see, I think the uh, variant has uh, pointed out that um a lot of people are expecting the you know whenever there's a rate cut, uh the market to continue to rally. But 
if you look into the historical trend, whenever there's a rate cut, sometimes actually the market will actually come down a bit. So it's not really as per what you've been saying, right? But of course, I think uh, what is more interesting is that I think in recent times, uh, I think the Fed has also guided that there's a possibility that the interest rate will remain higher for longer. And I think um, with this perception in mind, uh, investors probably need to adjust a bit of their expectation, especially for those who are investing in Singapore market. I think uh, Singapore SGX is well known for its uh, banks and of course the REITs as well. So yeah, as you can see, I think towards the end of last year, the Singapore REITs have actually uh, rallied quite a bit in anticipation of the rate cut this year. But I think as, as the time progressed, I mean, people are talking about 90% of rate cuts and it's a 66% and it's 40%. So so the, the there's a moving sort of expectations that, you know, uh, the rate cut might not be coming as soon as expected. So those have actually uh, reflected in a lot of the prices that you've seen among the Singapore rates. So I think uh, Varian later, he'll highlight some of the technicals as well. But I think uh, for with, with this in mind, I think um, there's also a shift in terms of what to invest, especially in Singapore. So uh, one of it, of course, you can see is the banking sector. So I think the banking sector, the banking trio, uh, DBS Group, uh, UOB as well as OCBC have actually uh, benefited from this trend as well uh, because the high interest rate means the uh, NIM actually expanded and you can see that mo most of the banks have actually recorded very strong earnings and uh, with a dividend yield of around 6% to 7%, I think that gives a, a very comfortable uh, hedge against the inflationary pressure that we are seeing. Of course, uh, with, with this in mind, I think um, investors should also take note that this uh, probably are re already reflected in the share prices for the banks. But uh, for the REITs, if you look into the REITs, a lot of their prices have actually come down. And I think uh, recently there's also some um, uh, updates. Uh, if you look at the earnings, a lot of the REITs have actually managed to maintain their earnings per se. So fundamentally, it is not as bad. And I think a lot of them have actually hedged in terms of their borrowings as well. So I think close to 60 to 70% of that is probably hedged into a fixed rate. So, so that I've actually given a lot of the REITs players some comfortable uh, range, you know, even if uh, interest rates were to remain uh, high for longer. You know, the question is really when will interest rate be cut, right? Because um, I think even if you talk here, what Varian is saying, he's probably expecting a, a rate cut this year as well. So that that with this in mind, I think uh, for longer term investors, uh, the Singapore REITs actually offered some of these opportunities. But uh, aside from that, uh, in the near term, probably I think uh, Varian will highlight it later. It is probably a bit too early to jump on board into some of these uh, REITs counters. Uh, but if you're looking at a higher re interest rate environment, you can also look at uh, companies that actually have uh, a lot of cash buffer or their business is uh, op cash operating uh, in terms of the likes of uh, Gunting Singapore, for example. I think uh, the business itself uh, allows them to hatch. So if you can see from the company's recent announce announcement, you can see uh, earnings have actually uh, surged. But of course, uh, share price uh, remain below uh, $1. I think I think we talk about uh, Gunting Singapore for a while now. I think since the last uh, six months, we were expecting that to be recovery in terms of earnings. Of course, uh, we have seen that in earnings. We have not seen that in the share price yet. So that's probably one area that uh, investors can look into. Aside from uh, Gunting Singapore specifically, I think uh, companies with um, low borrowing and of course with cash positive uh, so the likes of uh, Singsiang, for example, uh, also one of those that investors can look into. And I think uh, it, is, it is very interesting to see uh, how some of these companies will be able to um, navigate through uh, this uh, sort of uh, uncertainty, especially if you're talking about slower economic growth. So uh, that aside, I think aside from the, the those counters, investors can also look into, let me just go and see, uh, give me a sec. I need to jump this slide because yeah, I think, yeah, investors can also look into the likes of uh, Samcorp Industries. I think uh, what I, why I want to highlight this is because I think today you've, uh, you are seeing a new prime minister that's coming in, uh, Lawrence Wong. And I think if you look at to some of the forward-looking statements and uh, prospects that Singapore is looking into, one of it is really on renewable and another is really on uh, artificial intelligence. I think so those are key areas that investors can, can really tap into. And I think the opportunities there are going to be really exciting for those in Singapore market. So I think uh, Semco Industry is one of those that have a very strong and attractive uh, buy call per se. So uh, wait, let me see. Varian is back. Varian, you want to take back because I, I skipped a bit uh, because I just want to highlight some of the fundamentals along. Yes. The uh, thank you. Later, I'll update on. I, I was listening as well. So uh, hey, thanks for some picking up some points that I wish to share. 
uh, yeah. uh like like mm -hmm. the the pricing in of the banks or this and also don't jump into the risk counter and i will highlight from the technical perspective on why yeah uh, okay you thank you very much yes i will share it you know. all right don't buy Lenovo shares. Uh. Uh, Lenovo, Lenovo is uh, my, my work laptop is Lenovo. <laughs> Every time hang. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Lawrence Wong don't really like me to share. Oh, no, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm talking nonsense. Yeah. Okay. So, rate card, uh, be careful what you wish for. And then I think, uh, why? Okay. So, um, I think PPI number is five minutes away. So, uh, I based on this, uh, what I think that is likely to increase higher or maintain, right, is because of uh, yesterday PPI actually talked. So what is PPI? PPI is actually uh, production cost by businesses. So you can see that every time we survey, um, the actual number actually uh, come in. And why there, is there any initial release over here is because um, the thing is uh, US has this um, this habit, all right? When they release like NFP or something, chances are they will revise it and they won't tell at the world, they, they, they won't tell anybody, they will revise it, but they will use a revised number for the uh, for the next, what do you call that? Uh, for the next month, all right. For the next, uh, next release, all right. On all this, all right. So, um, all this. So that's why I can. There's a CPR number is uh, uh, is uh, is going to be you know, uh, slightly increased or just maintain. Uh, if it drop, will be a good news, all right. Market will tell you the U.S. market will show all time high, or will break all time high. Okay, so for you also a uh, much more clearer picture. I uh, can see that uh, inflation is likely to maintain. Um, it used to be that the eurozone and US can be like you know like the leading and the lagging kind of indicator of reference or right? but in recent days they can't because um eurozone um is a bit peculiar especially Germany when German when 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 the when the economy is not doing very well I think US spend is way out right but for Germany it goes to austerity means that it's safe uh actually Germany has the lowest um debt to GDP ratio in the world, uh, it's only like 40% of the GDP is, it, we are even higher than them, all right, uh, we are one of the highest in that, um, we are, um, according to debt to GDP ratio, but we are still safe and sound, all right, okay, so based on this harmonized index of the, C, you can see that, uh, white color Germany, uh, is around 2.4, I think, uh, next one is going to, um, uh, to dip even more, all right, so ECB and BOE rate decision. So, uh, rate cuts for BOE is actually, uh, actually quite confirmed. I would say sixty to eighty percent chance. Um, the Bank of England governor actually committed it uh, during the last, uh, I think last week during the interest rate decision. So, uh, we can see that uh, the pound is actually going to get weaker against the dollar. Uh, going forward on that. Okay, so uh, the what I mentioned, the uh, ECB BOE will likely have the rate cuts first rate cut in June. Uh, Fed will be likely later, uh, earlier September, latest uh, we know November. All right, so what will cause this? All right, so if uh the if the the Europe and the eurozone, uh and the the British um the, the Brits actually cut rates, then you will bring the strength of the dollar uh going forward. So dollar will still be the king. So this, when dollar is still the king, then you will affect all the equities market around the world, including Singapore. All right. So because um the 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 um the dollar will will cause uh will significantly strengthen appreciate among all currency, and then after that they will just do something. Uh, when this happen, uh, on the side note, I think the ASEAN country, the developing ASEAN country, will be very very in a dangerous zone. Uh, you. I, I was talking to someone recently. Uh, there may be uh, ASEAN 2.0 if, I say if, uh, all right, if the US government decide to hike the interest rate. Uh, not a surprise, it can be done. Uh, yeah, so I just want to, I just hope that we won't go until that level, all right? Okay, so next one. Okay, so um, to the technical parts, I think the dollar index, we can see that uh, is, Trading at around 106 resistance level came down uh, and then came up uh, as expected. So I expect the dollar index to make one more wave down to test 104 before attempting a rebound to the upside. Uh, we can see that uh, based on this since uh, Feb 2023, and uh, that we can see that uh, this is actually a very much in the accumulative stage. Actually, this chart, right? Later, later I'll show you another ASEAN pair. Uh, maybe you want to make a guess. This chart is quite similar, all right, 
to the pattern that we're going to show you later. All right, so this is the sing dollar. So if you can see that the dollar index and the sing dollar, uh, the dollar, the US dollar against sing are uh, quite uh, quite similar. All right, all right. Uh, actually, okay. Uh, this is dollar index. You can see my chart. This is US dollar and sing dollar. You can ask why is because um, actually the MES of Singapore, um, they use a very clever method. All right, they don't use, they don't, they don't uh, have this monetary policy on uh, interest rate itself, but they use uh, capital control and the near band. So it means that they will man they, no, not manipulate, they will intervene when necessary. All right, against a basket of currency. What kind of basket of currency? Don't ask me, ask MES. All right, MES will have the knowledge though, but they, are, they won't tell you instead. The dealers will tell you, the traders will, there will tell you because they are bought by official secret act. So don't ask. Also, yeah, so uh, in the region, I think Sing, uh, USD against Sing uh, will be, if you want to, if you double in FX, I think this will be the one that uh, you could look at it because it's very stable. We can buy, buy, sell, buy a low, sell at the top, buy a low, sell at the top, and you will go in and, and out. All right, think, maybe you can think like MBS, what we will do, all right? Okay, so uh, we go to North Asia and ASEAN. So ASEAN, I, me I mentioned that they, if the Feds don't cut rate or if they cut lower rates, uh, it will cause pain to ASEAN currency, especially to uh, Indonesia and Thailand. Malaysia, not necessary because Malaysia has um, hold their OPR rate at 3%. And I think that the Bank Negara Malaysia, um, they intend to do it this way. So to boost tourism dollars uh, and our Malaysian economies also have this point of view. Uh, if you want to read their report, uh, you can log into our iTrade account and then you can access to the Malaysia. They just released um, the report uh, recently. So I do share the same sentiment. Um, not, I'm not a Malaysian myself, but I do share the same sentiment because uh, Anwa, the Madani government is bending much on the inflows of funds uh, for foreign direct investment. So weakening, um, weakening ringgit actually will benefit this opportunity. And at the same time, they want to keep the domestic tourism flourish and then uh, attract more tourists into the country itself. All right, but for North Asia, I think China and uh, China, uh, although it's not slammed with some uh, trade tariffs and all this, um, but you know, uh, China has once again uh, uh, show 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 hand on this bazooka. Um, the Chinese actually um, have, have increased their bond selling to fund some of the things. So the US, when they sell bonds, they give they give money out of people. To the pockets to people and then people will spend it but china on the other hand works uh, works differently they do it in a way that you build that they will go into projects and they'll create more jobs especially in construction infrastructure projects uh specifically in the ev sector as well so it, and the construction and the property sector so it will likely stabilize the market and then bring more jobs uh in so there'll be some sort of youth unemployment coming back as well all right. Uh, also, the geopolitical uh, between China and West provide a great opportunity to ASEAN region, particularly Malaysia and Singapore. So for this part, I think uh, Billy just talked about uh, um, Samcorp industry uh, as well. So I think that Samcorp will likely benefit from this thing. Uh, you can see that YTL Corp in Malaysia has and YTL Power has really surged up. But I think uh, whenever they do that, I think Samcorp industry will likely follow. But recently, none. Okay. but um, I, I, I believe it's coming. So for Singapore, uh, what are the sectors to look out for? I think the banks will continue to be the key overweight counters to hold for long term uh, because whether there's rate cut or rate maintains, maintenance, I think the net interest margin uh, will be the key, key thing to look, watch out for. So, um, and the banks has been, on the technical front, has been displaying very strong uh, uptrend momentum. Also recently, this overbought. All right, I'm looking for another thing is supply chain related will be Samudera. Uh, Makum Polo Marine is because oil and gas and plus they are shipbuilding, uh, they, they do a ship vessel as well, and then Yang Tzu Jiang. Uh, we'll continue with the benefits of supply chain risk in North Asia and to the West um, going forward. All right, so um, I touched on the, the macro sector, the top down approach. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you think that uh, there's something you would like to add on, uh, please. Uh, right in the q a or chat group uh if you disagree with me that you can you can actually uh, do it all uh, right i will answer some of queries to the best of my abilities all right so let's touch on the technical fund flow so um there is recently there is a lot of uh, speculation in the small and mid cap 
Uh, particularly, I think uh, why is because um, the largest cap in the SDR in the Singapore market, the three banking stock plus Singtel. Singtel is actually the second largest cap after DBS. Uh, banking stocks are actually closing into overbought, although three of them are technically on the uptrend. Um, with UOB and OCBC breaking new high, uh, UOB is lagging. All right. So, um, and then um, uh, but, um, that, that's like a bit of profit taking. Uh, banks are some more of the real you play as well. For REITs, REITs are secondly still on the downtrend, uh, uh, which later I'll show you on the REITs index uh, on this. Uh, property is not doing very well. Uh, I think uh, for the MSCI Singapore index can see that the um, the 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 properties are all the properties counter that has been taken out. You can see city development is taken out to date and a few two months ago, UOL is being taken out. All right, so industrial, so, um, industrial stock, I'm still overweight on some corp industry, capital corp and both state. Um, both state, there's some rumor of potential privatization. Um, not confirmed yet, but um, rumors, all right. Telecommunication is officially, uh, usually the defensive counter um, sector. So uh, much more on Singtel. Uh, Starhub is way overbought for now, although I issue a trust for the peak for time. So by banking on the defensive, so for the transportation, I think SIA has released the result tonight. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure of it. SETS is two weeks ago, uh, two weeks later. Um, but SETS, um, long term, I think that there's a very, very strong break above the $3 going very, very long term. SIA engineering as well. Uh, I have a special one for NEO. Uh, it's listed in Singapore. Don't be surprised. All right, I uh, issued this transporter recently as well. All right, so um, before I go on, um, this is one of the reasons why they are flowing into small and cap. And I do have uh, some small cap stocks that uh, that we're in. So if you are interested, uh, join our Telegram and then we will share more and then you can ask about a question as well. All right, so the Simsky Singapore Index, uh, there's a slight pause in rally. All right, after reaching our first target at, um, at Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Maslan. All right, thank you for the SIA. Wow, good news. All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, so for CMC Singapore Index, uh, we saw uh, a trend higher and then touches uh, my target as uh, 308.35. Uh, this was actually um, on our previous report dated on 30th of April uh, by Singapore Strategy Sing in Five. Uh, still showing some strength of upside, uh, but uh, short term as uh, exhaustion. So likely a pullback, touching the base and then uh, rally. But if the US uh, CPI, let me see the CPI number. Uh huh. Yes, yeah, CPI uh, rose less than expected, and then Dow future jumped 180 points. That is good news, all right, actually. All right. Um, the index, uh, but short short term is uh, showing a brief exhaustion at 308.35. Um. Uh, Long-term sentiment, I'll uh, we'll be uh, looking at uh, 3,000. Uh, this, this, this is a typo, all right? So uh, pardon me. All right. Uh, do you think stats will start paying dividends this year? This year, I don't know, man. Yeah, so, sorry. Okay, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. Sorry, Angel, I can't answer that. All right. Uh, but my back says, I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, I, I H3 index. Um, okay, so this is the index that track, track the Singapore REITs index. Uh, you can see that uh, 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 it's downside, uh, and then there's a, there's a downtrend on to $932. And, uh, there's a 932 points possibly. Uh, we may see some um, further drop, reprice, touching. Um, this level before going down on the further on the downside. So uh, it may it, it, uh, it may just break below the 1000 psychological level and touch support at uh, 932 level going forward on this. Okay, yeah. so yeah. We Sorry, do have some question. I think, uh, I think there's one that's asking uh, Wilma International, but I think we can yeah. update the technical later in a bit after you finish. Yes, some of I, the will, I will actually wanna... I plan to do update because um, yeah. I'll update on the technical front. I won't, I won't talk much about the result because um, I'm still unclear on what's the mechanics on Wilma, but I can share with you what's the technical that uh, caused the disappointment uh, in that, that caused a misread, all right? Uh, actually, the misread on my part. So I think, uh, give you some hint, it may just drop to $3 uh, going forward on this. All right, may I? All right. 
Okay, so DBS, uh, looking at the, the chart, you can see that there are some signs of uh, weakening already. All right, so uh, gap up uh, on good earnings, and then after that, gap down, on, uh, I think this was XD, and then rebounded at the 9 period conversion line. Uh, ever since it has been going on the slow, um, uh, uh, narrow candle, so this is not a very good sign at the top. So this slowing momentum. But nonetheless, I, I think that there's still positive upside touching $36 or even higher at $36.95 before a correction down. But if the correction do come early, all right, uh, this, this $34.09 and $33.07 will be the key support to look out for. All right, over, overall, I think DBS is still going on for a larger uh, uptrend. All right, so what am I worried about? MACD long-term, uh, I'm not worried. But I'm more worried about the midterm stochastic uh, showing a uh, over bot crossover and uh, the short term DMI, the ADS peak, and then the DM plus, uh, DM plus um, is uh, actually slowing down. So, uh, so if it fails to materialize, break new high tomorrow, then I think for the rest of uh, this week and next week, uh, we might see a correction down uh, to here. But I'm still quite positive that uh, the correction won't likely be a major one unless some, um, some news uh, that came out to be uh, to be negative reaction. All right, OCBC. Uh, one thing, uh, strong momentum. Uh, momentum remains neutral and steady, uh, but I think uh, what worries me is this double top, and then you can see that Ichimoku, the Senko Spanish actually sloped down uh, uh, on this. All right, um, the 26 period uh, baseline is flat, so shows that our momentum has gone back into a uh, uh, neutral territory. Uh, meanwhile, I think ADS continues to stay upside. Uh, oversold uh, crossover did not uh, create much of hoo-ha, uh, but I'm very scared of the V-shaped double top uh, pattern. So any correction down will likely test 3040, uh, which is the previous high uh, before attempting a rebound to upside. Uh, target will remain at fifteen dollars and twenty to thirty cents. All right. All right, Semco Industry. Uh, so this is the one of the upside. Uh, the thing that I've been seeing A, B, C, and then uh, D. Uh, wave touching at five dollars seventy five cents. Um, E wave and then it came down at five thirty to four point nine six. Uh, likely going to longer term. So, but I think that there may be a potential rally up to test four point five point seven five first. Our reason being because uh, we can see that uh, despite a sell down, we can see that uh, prices do remain supported at 5.13 uh, key support level. And, and there's a strong rally came down and then uh, rally again. So a uh, whole lot is very uh, consolidative, but I think that there will be one more step up to form the, the three wave pattern to test the upside again. All right. Uh, sets is one of the one that I want to show uh, on this. Uh, for this, I think uh, it has gone been uh, accumulating for one uh, one year one point five years already. Um, and then recently, after after hitting my pop at two two ninety, and then it just came down all the way. I made a buy call on here, but it ended up we were lost. Uh, I think that was in early uh, late January. Uh, transport pit. So it came down rebound at near the bottom at three two thirty seven, and then rebounded straight away at 245 key support level for me inverter head and shoulder uh so why is break 262 well we are likely to confirm the inverter head and shoulder uh some of the early signs include uh rising high higher lows of the senko spending uh, the green color line of the ishimoku and then uh there's a potential crossover over here as well uh divergence on both the 23 pure roc and stochastic uh and the oversold crossover has actually lead to higher uh, up, uh, potential upside going forward. So we maintain by with a midterm uh, with a long term target at three oh five. Right. Uh, Singtel. Some of you ask us, uh, what do you think of Singtel just released? Um, actually, uh, based on technical front, uh, the 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 result I can't tell you much in brief because I haven't gone deeply into it. Uh, I need to ask my analyst as well. Um, but uh, the the technical is showing some sort of like a uh, stronger upside. In fact, I did a buy call back in over here and then uh, updated on 30th of May uh, recently. So it, it just trended up higher. And then um, the key thing is I'm worried about is this $6.90 to $7 resistance level. So if you fail to break, then we must see a larger degree correction down to test 631 uh, before attempting a rebound. But uh, given I think some of the positive results by Maslan uh, that he, he shows us, 
I think that we are, are, are likely to see a break to the upside at seven dollar and forty four cents um, as a as a long term target. So uh, mid term target six point nine is my first target uh, first target price. All right, Samudero shipping. Uh, okay, so this is uh, actually uh, the stock that I, I really like uh, because it's on the uptrend channel. Uh, this price up XD, uh, we can see that it rebounded at seven dollar ninety cent when rebounded, closing uh, above uh, ninety cents, and then we likely see uh, uptrend towards nine dollars. But uh, given this uh, uh, this uh, hangman kind of pattern, I think we might just see a correction down. Uh, lower than that before attempting a rebound, or it may actually open higher uh, tomorrow. But all in all, long term, I think is on the upside. Uh, target is $1.52, uh, not $1.50, cents. pardon for my uh, typo. Right, new uh, INC, uh, it is supported, it stays supported uh, despite uh, the tariffs that we've seen on China. I think it's quite resilient. Uh, it's on the uptrend right now, but if we do fail four below four dollars sixty seven cents, I will have cut my loss and then see a uh, more opportunity going on. But I think that if we open higher tomorrow above six fifty, then we can see that this V shape rebound is actually uh, confirmed, and then we are likely to see a continuation upside towards uh, nine dollars forty cents uh, in the near term. All right, uh, all other indicators are showing signs of bullish continuation and uh, bullish reversal. Uh, at long term MACD, you can see the histogram has been rising steadily um, above the zero line, which is positive, and we are likely to see uh, 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 upside on going on for them. All right, uh, small cap. Uh, we have this small and mid cap, uh, Marco Polo Marine, uh, reached our target price at seven cents, and then um, uh, um, on, this is actually our second, uh, second target price. Uh, likely to see one more 75 cents before entering a larger correction. Uh, reason why is because I think uh, you can see the breakout pattern wasn't that or a strong one. Uh, still relatively weaker than normal. So uh, we think that uh, there is uh, some sort of like a uh, 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 last push to 75 cents before the correction. All right, uh, that's my uh, thing. But also you plot out from a longer term chart, right? Uh, Marco Polo actually has been uptrend for the uh, past 3.5 years. All right, so um, next one will be on Marine uh, Mermaid Maritime. Uh, one of the mid cap stock, uh, small mid cap stock as well. Um, hit my first target price at 60, 60, 1, 0 0.160. Uh, I think likely to, to see um, slump slight correction down uh, around 140 uh, before attempting higher to test 18 cents, uh, 0 0.18. Right, top glove, uh, the glove companies, uh, one of the best one, uh, strong and parabolic rally likely to last uh, as we reach beyond our second target today. Actually, we reach my first and second to target all together at once um, based on the April, as always, always here. Um, broke out the range, uh, confirmed the invert, larger inverted head and shoulder. So I think that one more break above 365 is likely, and the next one will be uh, looking at the uh, 38 cents uh, target going forward. Right, River Stone as well. Um, uh, reached beyond our third target at 98 cents. Uh, before that, I do have uh, River Stone over here as well. Um, this is actually a very, uh, very uh, similar kind of factorial pattern uh, back in uh, early, late 2023 and early 2024. And this is the same as well. So we are like to see a target to a $1 upside and um, we shall see going forward. Uh, my fourth target is actually at 103. All right, um, this, uh, this actually considered a large cap, but it's relatively unknown. All right, uh, it's Tianjin Pharmaceutical Ren Tang, quite famous in Hong Kong. I uh, did issue on my Hong Kong transporter as well on this uh, before, but uh, finally, uh, based on TS on 16 March, when uh, then uh, consolidate consolidation and a break to the upside. We can see that uh, recently there's a lot of like funny fund flow flowing into this kind of like unrelatively either small cap or large cap stocks that is uh you know on this uh on uh, later I'll show you my screen now I can you you will know low volume but uh very large cap on this uh volume remain very low on this large cap so I'll be 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 beware after uh two four eight reach our target and then I'll close all my position or if you want to close it now without looking at two four eight is also good as well. All right, so uh, these are my end of presentation before I go into the charts and Q&A. Um, I did a link on this, so you can scan and join our 
Telegram channel group uh, on this. So uh, I'll post my link over here if you like. You can okay. post it on the chat, I think. You can post yes, it on the chat. Um, yeah. Yes, sure you select everyone. Uh. Yes, yes, I know. I need to be, I need to select everyone. Uh, sorry, uh, my laptop a bit lag all the way. I don't know why. Never mind. I'm just going to address, I think there's a question on Singapore Airlines in terms of the earnings right just now earlier. Yes, think, uh, uh, you can help me on this. Yeah, I think if you follow our research report, uh, the results is very much in line with expectations. So I think uh, our recent reports have more or less the same expectations and they also talk about the bumper dividend as expected. So I guess a lot of those are pretty much in line. But of course, I think uh, one of the key things to take note of is that um, the Singapore Airlines did highlight that uh, demand for air freight might, uh, you know, might moderate a bit uh, in the second half. But overall, I think they are still positive uh, in terms of the passenger yield and everything. So, so that's a positive sign. But if you have, um, if you're comparing, if you're expecting a similar pace of growth as per last year, then of course, uh, it's probably going to be unlikely to, to repeat itself uh, because I think uh, recovery has very much uh, priced in and, and, and we have seen uh, Singapore Airlines benefit from it quite a, a bit. Of course, uh, recovery from China is also slower than expected, but we are still seeing that pick up. So if you look at travelers uh, that is coming from China, has actually grown quite significantly. <coughs> so those are things that uh, investors can pay attention on. Uh, I think we have another questions on uh, plantation counters. Do you want to show some of them? I think uh, I think earlier there's also one on Vilma, right? Mm, yes, uh, let me just plot out my chart first because like yeah. usual, my, my internet very slow until this time. I don't know. No, it's okay. Every don't time. Okay, yeah, I don't buy it. That, I, think, I think we can yeah. also talk a bit on the gloves. I think uh, you mentioned top gloves and of course, uh, I think it's, it's, it's important to point out. I think that uh, one of the reasons for it is very likely to be the the news that the U.S. administration will raise tariffs on Chinese rubber gloves from, I think, 7.5% to 25% in 2026. So that's a significant increase in terms of tariffs. Uh, but not only that, I think if you look at uh, results, for example, I think uh, Sri Tang gloves, I think this is a, a Thailand-based uh, rubber glove maker. They have actually also posted uh, results where they show recovery in terms of their net profit. And of course, uh, sales volume has also increased. Uh, I think uh, management has also talked about the recovery on that front. So I think uh, the glove sector is probably way better than what it was uh, over the last one to two years. So uh, it's just something for investors to pay attention to. So I think, uh, of course, uh, Varian also highlighted all the technical that we've seen on top of and And what's the other company again? Eh? River... Riverstone. Riverstone. Yeah, Riverstone. So it's also something that investors can pay attention to. So I think uh, Top Love is also dual listing. It's also listed on uh, Busa Malaysia as well. So if investors in Malaysia, you want to buy uh, in, in Malaysia and SGX, is, you can also take advantage of that. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you want to mention, uh, focus yes, on Yes, I'll mention Wilma. Because Wilma, I did a transporter on the third of April, but uh, and, uh, and my title is very nice. Bullies break finally. But <laughs> Let's see the situation. Yeah, you can laugh all you want, man. Yeah, it happens, because on it third, yes, man. Third April, it breaks. Yes, I saw this long bar. Then after that, come down a bearish dark clock cover. Uh, goes up. Yeah, I was uh, very happy. Then after that, uh, on this day, 16th of April, it gets down. Weak recovery. That um, I think earnings wasn't that great, so it, it just came down all the way. Uh, testing yep. uh 3.18. Uh, rebounded on the day on 30th of April, but you see this uh, sluggish move. So I think, all right, there's a potential chance that it may just go to three dollars and seven cents, or even lower at three dollars. All right, uh, it may it may actually go lower. So, uh, if you ask me, am I still positive on Wilma? I think, uh, uh, you have to see either three dollars or where we hold, on. because three dollars is a psychological level, new low. Uh, mm -hmm. if we if we I don't know, we will take out the previous low at three o seven. Uh, I hope it does, and then it will just recover from there. But uh, also the fact that I feel to misread is three four five is actually the the low here. All right. Uh, I was betting that it might just break above, go up higher, at least to three point six nine to to just exit with some profit. But in the end, uh, in the end, in the end, materialize. All right. Maslan also asked about what's the uh, uh, plantation stock uh, outlook. I would say that growth is sluggish. I think. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, this one is one of my transporter pick as well. Uh, why I did this is because of uh, ranging. Just uh, this one longer that sets uh, is two years, six months. Uh, rebounded from a high. Uh, today, I think it just came out of the result. 
right, with strong volume. Right, but uh, you can see plantation, you must see CPO. Uh, yeah. What's my Malaysia Absolutely. one? Uh? Crude pump or an MI? I just crude. Um, well, when I see the slow letter, I very scared. I thought my comp would make hang again. Okay, so you can see the crude palm oil. You can actually, the, you can just came down and then uh, find some support over here at 3,008 uh, psychological level. Uh, so if I'm going to do this, is 3,801 and then uh, some bullish upside. But we must take note that, uh, that we must cross the 4,000 level um, to confirm the upside. So uh, how the plantation stock will let, likely ready right, is when uh, crude palm oil actually breaks 4,000. 15 uh, before going up again. Uh, you can see a larger trend uh, on this is uh, if you go to weekly chart. If you go to the weekly chart again, uh, so sorry. Yeah, you go to the weekly chart, we can saw a downside and then uh, accumulation. And then we like to see a uh, uh, rally going to the upside again. So uh, I think there is yeah. some question. There's some questions on the capital DC read as well. Uh, while yes, you, yes, yes. While you search for the technical, I think I'll probably just highlight a bit. Uh, I think the negative surprises, I think uh, there is on the Guangdong Blue Sea data development. So that one is more or less priced in already. La. So uh, in a way, I think uh, a lot of the, if you look at the share price, you will see that it's probably yes. reflected of what it is. La. So yeah, I'm just gonna. Okay. Yep. Uh, capital DC, I don't think is a very good uh, outlook. Uh, first up, I think you can see that uh, ranging, I think it's going to break lower, uh, despite all sort of indicators showing upside. So reads are not very, very positive. You can see that uh, it's sluggish. So range bound, uh, would like to read uh, support at $1.63. All right, uh, yeah. Any more questions? Don't see it at the moment. So I just wanted to highlight a bit. I think you talked about Singtel earlier as well. Just wanted to point yes. out this. I think uh, the, if you look at the Singapore government that's been talking about the investment of uh, more than 1 billion over the next five years on artificial intelligence. So I think uh, Singtel, the telco companies, as well as some of the data center reads, I think mm. including capital DC read, but of course uh, in the near term, it might look probably not mm. so compelling at the moment. But I guess in the longer term, if you look at some of this uh, structural growth, I think some of these companies will benefit from it now. So I think mm. you mentioned that Singtel, so I just want to highlight that as well. So yeah. Yes, uh, it's much more of a cumulative phase, uh, sideways trend. Uh, I think downside channel has been halted uh, if it breaks. So as long as it maintain above uh, $2.40, uh, it's likely to see uh, a strong upside. Uh, over here. So it might likely break 249 and then 253 uh, going forward on this. All right. What's your target uh, for this one? Target uh, for one? now, I'm looking at 259. Uh, 249 is actually my resistance level. Okay. It's also very much in line with our uh, fundamental uh, report. Uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It has a 284 uh, target price. So I think. Yeah. That, uh, that will be a very long term, actually. Yeah. Uh, so look at StarHub. Uh, StarHub is my friend's water pick for today. So why is because uh, for more info, you can just go log into this level. Uh, I think uh, I'll just post it. If you have iTrade account, I think it will be easier uh, yeah. on this. So, uh, but nonetheless, if it's okay if you don't uh, don't have, um, but please try to. Uh, we will appreciate your business. Um, but okay, back to the, the, the this uh, StarHub. I think you have broke out the rectangle range. Uh, in fact, it has reached my first target price at once one uh, final target price at 125 before going up higher. So next target, I'm looking at $1.36. In fact, it's higher than what my analyst is. Uh, my analyst is looking at 130. I'm looking at 136 uh, over the midterm. All right, longer term will be at 145 level. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to also highlight? I think the other day you brought. Uh, I think it's a small to mid cap also. Uh, Centurion Corp. I'm not sure how it's. Oh doing. yeah, Centurion is the do dormitory. I think yes, our analyst called, uh, he, he initiated. So credit goes yeah. to him. I just see the chart and then tell me okay, got signal. Let's go. Okay, so <laughs> Centurion, I init I did a update twice because uh final time hit my target at five two, and then right now uh after that uh based on this bullish flag. Great. Uh, it has. Uh, we have netted a, a growth of uh, 
I think close to 10%, close to 9%. So I think likely to pull back a bit and then before going up higher to 60 cents. Okay. And yep. uh, just now I also mentioned a bit on Gunting Singapore after their earnings. Uh, maybe you just want to share before we end the session. Uh, Gunting, I think uh, result is extremely good, but the technical is not showing a very strong signal. Uh, yep, gap up from, from range, it did not break any new high above uh, 96 cents. Um, so rightly, I think it's time if you bought at the bottom at 88 cents, time to take profit uh, and then look for opportunity elsewhere. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you for that. I think we have covered more or less uh, all the mm. questions. So yep. uh, thank you for joining us on our webinar today. Thank you very much yep. for the comprehensive overview on the macro as well as the technical front. So uh, I think we'll yep. see you again on the next session. Thank you. Sure, no problem. I hope uh, to have whoever I say uh, to all this, I think we just stay, uh, stay away for now, uh, including MLT because, uh, okay, before I end, uh, I give an MLT. Sorry, uh, sorry, Billy, uh, to take yeah, your it's okay. precious time. Uh, from a double bottom, but I would say that tomorrow, if we open close above 135, that is a positive signal. If not, in my just I see it go lower. So just take note. Uh, all right. I think uh, someone said, I know where, ah, Angela, uh, just take note on this. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Bye-bye.